Toronto, hello IDS, hello everyone. Thank you for having me. My name is Muriel Brandolini, and I will start by talking about my life and how it led me to become a decorator and how my background has shaped my eyes. I tried to always explore, grow, evolve, and surprise myself. I, constantly, uh, I'm, I am constantly asking, why not? This is why I love what I do and why I'm here today to share it all with you. I never studied decoration or had a formal training. My experience and travel had, are what have influenced me and my design. I'm a quarter French Venezuelan and I'm a half Vietnamese. Here is my story in picture. I was born in France and moved to Vietnam when I was nine months old. This is a country that gave me many gifts, a positive attitude and a determination to never give up. The energy of making the best out of any situation. My color sense has been influenced by the landscape, the flower, the bright temple, the spices, the food. Uh, I have a vivid memory of the rice field, which is a shade of green. The image has been a big inspiration in my work and repeated itself in different versions. This, is a, uh, this, this has taught me to keep my eyes and mind open. I can find inspiration all around me, in nature, film, sea life. Sky is a limit. I have a wild imagination. I can travel anywhere in my mind which lead me to new ideas. Martinique, I had to leave Vietnam in 1972 when I was 12 years old. We moved to Martinique on the 17th parallel to be closer to my mother father in Venezuela. All the colors there was flamboyant, tropical, green, rich, and dense. Here's an example of a typical shack in Martinique, which you can definitely see the color inspiration to the room next to it. All to my family still live in Martinique. I left when I was 20 years old to New York City, chasing the American dream. This is where I still live today. My childhood has given me a love of the sea and sun. I love scuba dive, and I can dream for hours in, in, in this underwater. Organic sea life motif have appeared in my work, like this coral branch applique in a nun tree, or this rock inspired by jellyfish, which we don't want to be bite, bitten by. I couldn't touch the four marble walls because it was a sublet, and I was also on a budget. So I used fabrics that I had collected over years and pieces from the garment district. Again, another version of the patchwork. We lived like hippies with a non-traditional layout. We slept on a bed in the center and on an open room which was also the dining room, the living space, the public spaces. This apartment was perfect for entertaining and leading a life of a party. A friend who is also a home editor, a home design editor came to dinner one night and decided to photograph the, this apartment for Harper's Bazaar. This apartment was published the same year, 11 times. So that was the beginning of my career. This image, uh, this is image is the first apartment that I was hired to create. It was the first home of a newlywed couple that my husband and I matched together. He, he was my husband friend and she was my girlfriend friend who I met while I was a stylist and she was a makeup artist. I used Dolce and Cabana's patchwork skirt for an editorial. It seems that this image repeats itself toward my work. I'm, real, I'm a real patchwork myself, and the mix of Europe and Asia come true in my design. Here is a view of a living room. Here is a view of the living room 
the wall are in a happy lacquer yellow, the furniture classic, Jean-Michel Franck, Ellen Gray, mixed with tri tribal African uh, pieces, Noguchi lamp, and a Venetian mirror. India, well, I India is all, also an important country on my personal map. I have a life-changing trip there after the birth of my second child, my daughter, Philippa. I was in Jaipur at the Jam Palace, where the walls are covered in fabric. I decided to create a line of block print on cotton. I couldn't stop thinking about them. And on the way to the airport, I decided to turn around and go back to the factory, and I thought, they look so beautiful. Why not wear them? Here we go. Then I created a line of kaftan. I came back with my four kaftan under my arm. I arrive in New York. I call up the press, and, and I went and presented to all the press, and the New York Times decided to put, give me a full page, the front full page. And my kaftan landed in Barney's, and fast after that, a lot of store came and ordered it. Um, it was a, a tremendous success overnight. The wall I cover in another fabric of my design, a purple block print. I dislike formal dining room because it feels they are never used. So I put a red like a Chinese bed in, in mine. Vietnam and hand embroidery. In the same important year of my trip to India, I also returned for the first time to Vietnam after having left in 1972. I discovered the incredible artisanal handwork and the embroidery and beading. beading. I decided to design a line of accessory and just coat. I'm not a fashion de designer. I just like to design what comes to my mind and I'm very free spirit, so it came. This jacket on the left is an embroidery on canvas. On the right is a beaded bag. In 1999 was a, turn, a turning point of my life, my vision and as a designer. I was introduced to contemporary design through Galerie Creo in Paris. I was their first, very first client. I started collecting Newson, Branzin, and Chapin, and Zekeli. I choose pieces not to fit a certain look, but because I'm attracted to the line, the use of material, good design remain good design, regardless of the style of our era. I do love work with contemporary artists. To grow with them, live with them, and create history together. I also have been lucky enough to work with clients who believe in my vision and wild ideas. This project is on, from 2002, a glass house in the Hudson in upstate New York. The architect is Thomas Pfeiffer. It is really the first project I can think of that show a strong change from where I was before. I became attracted to modern line and graphics use of color. As I mentioned earlier, I live in the same townhouse for 18 years, and it has been through several incarnations. I will now show you a few rooms as I look in 2006, and then later in 2010. I believe this paint a clear picture of how my aesthetic and I have changed over the year. My home is my laboratory, where I experiment. Here is my living room. The sofa is Napoleon III. The coffee table is by Martia Bonetti. And the console is by Axel Erner Hurt. I designed the crystal, crystal chandelier with Claire Cromier Fauvel. I told her, imagine me leaving Vietnam in a romantic way, on a boat. And she made me one in rock crystal and jade. I love working with artists. It is a wonderful collaboration with 
is a wonderful feeling to collaborate with someone who can interpret your word into a beautiful object. You gave them an inch, and in return, you receive an arm. My entry and my library. The Bronze Center Table, Radiant Disc by Michelle Okadona. A hanging, and hanging above is a hand embroidery lantern from Vietnam. I, rec I cover the wall of the library in a petrol blue corduroy. The side table is called Bell by Roman and Erwin Bovuleg. I took two banquets that I re upholstered with a patchwork of antique fabric, a mix of Indian, Japanese, and French. This is my dining room, the wall I cover in hand, embroidery silk from Vietnam. The table is from Martin Zekeli, the dining chair of Bowl. The bench is 17th century. All the rugs throughout my house are designed by Fedora Design. This, this is 2010, yes. I saw the, this Ritvel ceiling light at Sotheby's sale and was immediately taken by this, its purity. I fell in love. It made me change my whole house all over again. The walls are covered in two layers of fabric, a pale gray linen with a layer of metallic. That makes the room shimmer and give a depth and sensuality. This is the library and the landing, I suppose. Uh, the center marble table is from Monjarotti. I reuse the same lantern that you saw in 2006, but change the fabric to metallic jute. At the, uh, at the entry, library and living room are open one, on one floor. I created a division with a tree bookshelf by Andre Branzin. In my library, I covered the wall in a gold silk tafta that I had made in India. I designed this pair of slipper chair. It is my signature. The square one is for the husband, and the oval one is for the wife also in patchwork of antique fabric. In front is a lavern table, coffee table. The dining table is by Paul Evan. Pair with the same bull chair, the wall are in white corduroy, which has, was beaded, hand beaded in Vietnam with a quotation from Hemingway, the old man and the sea. The rug again here is Fedora design. Now, I will take you to the Dia Foundation in Beacon. For those who don't know, Dia is an art foundation, and they convert a, a factory upstate that now house an incredible connection of minimalist art and contemporary art. When I walked through, I walked through those huge rooms of Richard Surrey, Saul Lewitt, Louis Bourgeois, Donald Judd, Ankawara, it is hard to explain, but completely changed my vision as a decorator. I became more minimal in my own way. I don't think anyone would describe me as minimal, but me it is, for me it is. This home belonged to a young couple starting the family. It was a duplex, but I reimagined the layout. The second level will be an enfilade of room. Starting with the master bedroom, you will enter to the master bedroom, the living room, then the dining room. The dining room was originally the master bedroom. Because it was a narrow room, I designed a curved dining room, a curved dining table inlay with stripe and bronze. The ceiling light is by Hervé van der Straten, the chairs by Louis Kahn. I created a cube bookshelf for storage and to also display the co couple collection of Roger Capron ceramic. 
I imagine the dining room as a lake in a valley. The landscape on the wall is entirely hand beaded in Vietnam. The slate table is by Martin Zekeli. The ceiling light is by Angelo Lely. The dining chair were created by Damien Langlo Marine in three different colors of lacquer, inspired by Joe Ponty, Superleggera chair. This room is my interpretation of a, my kind of minimal, a wonderful pair of twin beds by Marcel Camreux, in between a Corian table by Martin Zekeli, with a lamp by Mark Newson, the ceiling light by Alvaro Alto. Here is a Hitchcock influence of bird on a wire. I always like a bit of humor in a house. My color palette has definitely become softer in itself, but strong at the same time, and still ma with many texture and layers. This is a black vinyl room, a bit as an I'm feeling. The desk is by Greta Grossman. The chairs are 50s Italian. The pendant light are by Gino Safati. Here we go, me, in 2012, enough work to create a book. Thanking Vietnam by creating a limit, limited edition version with beaded cover. I also wrote a travel guide in the back of my book. Creating my book was a torture. It was a hard process. I, I don't like to look back. I especially don't like to analyze my past work. I'm proud of this book, but I don't ask, I would never do another book. Anyway, it was so painful for me to create this book that while it was on the making, I said, so what is next? What can I do? I wanted to take a, re a revenge because I was angry. It was like frustrating. So I said, okay, let me call Barnes and say that I'm coming up with a book. And they immediately told me, Muriel, whoa, can we do the launch of your book? And I said, of course, thank you very much. And they, uh, they gave me the idea, we would like you to create a line and we will give you a pop-up shop for six weeks. Create whatever you want, you have carte blanche. Therefore, I say, okay, let's thank everyone who have helped me in my life. And I started with my own country. So I created uh, everything with design by Vietnam. Everything was hand embroidery or hand beaded from pillows, from beaded chairs, from beaded table. And uh, I created this store, which you can see right here, for six weeks. And I had enough material to feed the press. When that was done, and I was getting bored until the book would come out, I said, OK, what do I do next? I have enough furniture in storage. My children would never want them. They are getting rotten. So let's do something. So I, I called up. Sotheby's, Christie's, and Phillips. Sotheby's had a full calendar. Christie's mentioned that the sale would do really well if I was dead. No, I was still alive. So I, I called up Simon de Puri from Phillips, and I say, well, I would like to create a world of Muriel Brandolini in auction on stage, but I really would like to create rooms. So he flew immediately the next day from London to meet with me. So I was really thrilled. I said, wow, I must have a good idea. So he arrived, and we did create this cell at Phillips where I, I rebuilt room, I constituted room, where people could tra travel through and see really my work and, and um, choose what they like, and everything was for sale. It was a great success. Even some people bought the entire room. And it was also very educational because I have asked and invited school, university of design to come. And so I had gave a talk to a student, explain why I did certain thing. It was very rewarding. Finally, the pain of making a book was rewarded by all of this. Here we go. Oops. 
Some last word of my approach to the design. It is not just about furnishing a room. It is about a lifestyle, about creating a home that invites people in and makes them comfortable and happy. It is to give them a better life. I love to work with family for them to feel cozy in their home, to be an escape from the outside world, your home should protect and reflect you, to see my client happy and feeling better in their own life. I hope that this glimpse into my world gives you some inspiration for your own. Thank you, and I welcome, I welcome any question you might have. Uh, I'm very curious to know about the dining room with the beaded walls that were made in Vietnam. I have a lot to say about it. So Please that, expand because that was such a stunning Okay, so I'm going to go back to this because I was hired, I was asked to, to do an apartment that I didn't want to do. It was a cube, it, was, it had no soul whatsoever. The ceiling was not extremely high. It was flat. Um, so I said, but how can I make a room beautiful? So I tried to create dimension to this room, meaning so I, I drew uh, a valley, a river, birds, flower, a landscape to give a third dimension to the room in order to feel invited to it and to give a soul to this room. And um, Vietnam did a perfect job because as you can see, all is following, even though there is no detachment from the door to the wall. And it is a beautiful room in a very difficult space. Um, I don't have a pre uh, preference between my project. I think that every time that I am entering a project, I feel that I will never get it. I will never be successful. I always panic. What is the most beautiful thing about my work and my life and what I do, and that's why I'm still doing what I'm doing, is that I like to surprise myself. I take a blind palette and I say, where am I going? Because I do not like to repeat myself. In my work, I'm not a cookie cutter. I'm not, I'm not going to say, oh, this couch was there, let's put it back here. Uh, I really get in to meet the client, think about how I can make their life better. I don't give them one option when I just work before the presentation. I give them three options. I think about what can suit them best. And it's about the client, and what I create is about them. So it's a little bit like being a shrink, and what is the most exciting about is what next? How can I make something wonderful for those specific people? What is your um, biggest source of inspiration? Where do you the world, the life, I'm inspired by everyone. I'm inspired when I wake up, I get up, I see something. Uh, everything is bringing me something. It's not simply one, a place where we go. It's the, the life that we lead. Well, I live in New York. I like the, the, the speed of New York. I like the energy of New York. Um, it's fast, fast, fast. The, the, the quality of life is not what will be in Paris. I adore Paris. I feel like a lady working, walking on the street. I feel feminine. I feel like, you know, I'm it's close to being human. In New York, you are rushing, you are working, you are successful. And, uh, but you don't have this approach of the humanities that you can have in other countries. And in Vietnam, a place that I go a lot, I, I, I giggle, I laugh. I feel that the positiveness of this, this people in this country is so uh, vividly, um, you know, it gives you so much. Uh, everything is a joke, you know. You take life very lightly and you enjoy every moment of it. You enjoy it by waking up and eating a pho, which is a wonderful noodle soup. What a 
enjoyed your presentation. Um, I wonder if you could share with us your vision of the future. Well, it's hard. Okay, the future for me as a decorator, for example, when client asks me to shop on the internet is torture because I'm still the, of the old school and I do love to touch, to have connection, a human connection to every piece and know the history of where it comes from. I'm not an internet person and this world is going in this direction. So for me, it's very, very cold. It's hard. I don't know. It's not my generation. I hope the best for who is, is living there, but I like to be old-fashioned and stay old-fashioned. And believe in the artisana, believe in the human touch, believe in talking to artists, giving them an inch, and then they come back with uh, something extraordinary. successful designer is to be a good listener and it's never about you it's about what you can make for other people and that when you take it from there you are a giver and then if you are able to give you are able to make it hi how are you Any hello story? how are you good thanks um i, I saw how you highlighted that um you know, you went from more please speak louder it's very hard to hear your question okay stand up to. Um, you highlighted how you went from more traditional approach to more contemporary. Excuse uh, me? How you went from more like traditional to more like contemporary now. Um, do you have an idea of where you're going to go to next? Like how are you going to evolve from where you are now? That would be my challenge and my surprise, which is why I'm still doing what I'm doing, because I surprise myself. It's motivating to wake up in the morning, have a new idea, and go with it, run with it, and have it happening. This is how my life has unrolled itself. It, I always have weird idea at 4 o'clock in the morning, because I wake up extremely early. And this is when there's no noise in the house, and I can think and I generate a lot of fantastic ideas. I mean, all this idea in my book came in my, at four o'clock in the morning, especially the, the most recent one was a Phillips sale auction, and also, you know, all the creative, creative side of my work come early, and uh, so this is what it is. I hope I answer your question. Funny what you are asking because I've been I've been telling my assistant lately. I said I have stopped doing gelaba. I think in '97 because I had way too much work here. to also be in retail. It was too much. The creativity part of doing a line of gelaba is very easy, but the retail part, meeting with vendors, press, etc., is very much time consuming. But I I miss it. I I created a small line of gelaba for the launch of my book, a limited edition of. But I was just thinking that I was missing it so much that I may be going back to do it. But I don't know that I want to retail it to, uh, to or just be exclusive for one store. Yes, it's something that I do well, and it's something that I enjoy doing, but it's, it's a time consuming, but I, maybe one day. Fascinated by your connection and the way that you work with artists, and I'm wondering how that process unfolds for you. You know, you're giving them an inch, 
sort of implies that you say, here, this is what I want, and you wait till they bring it back, but I'm wondering how involved you are in that process and how that works for you. When I meet an artist, it's not, I, I would hate to tell him what to do. He's like, okay, take your pencil and just draw it for me. I mean, I think that is a little insulting for the artist itself. I will approach an artist because I like originally what he does, but it might not suit me. So we have a conversation and we, did, we, we, we brainstorm about what material can be used, what direction can be taken, and then I leave him alone because I respect the artist. And then they come back and surprise me because I do not want to monopolize my idea. I want to really say, oh, this I can't use it really, but why don't we? And, and it's a conversation. This is so wonderful. It's one thing that you cannot have on the internet. Is you can have it one to one and speak about objects, items, um, dream about what is the impossible, which will become reality.